xây tương thân tình trong đạo phật tùy khác màu nhưng một tôn sư hôm nay đây cùng nhau họp mặt quyết nói theo đường phật giáo hoàng dương dạ nam mô bổn sư thích ca mâu ni phật dạ yeah, con uh, đại đức ấn minh xin uh, cung kính À, chư tôn đức chào chư tôn đức giáo phẩm và à, chú quý phật tử à, con là đại đức ấn minh đây là sư chú ấn tri à, chú là một sư di của chùa dư pháp và à, sư đệ của con yeah. um, all right ấn tri let's um, start okay for so today obviously it's a buddhism question and answer kind of show so of course let's start from the foundation and talk about um, what Buddhism is or who started it and how long ago did it exist in terms of today and before. Okay. Um, and I believe you're asking this question in regard to the Buddha's birthday that's coming around. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> well, the, Buddha's, uh, the Buddha was born um, over 2,500 years ago in, in, Lum, Lum, in the Lumbini Garden. Uh, the story goes that um, Queen Ma Maya, she um, was walking home to visit her parents, and on the walk home, she had to go into labor, and uh, she was at the Lumbini Garden, and the story goes that she reached upon the tree, and the Buddha gave birth on the side of her, of her, uh, of her body, and the Buddha, you know, when he walked, when he came out, he walked seven steps. Mm. And um, through those seven steps, he basically said that this will be my last rebirth, you know, from the heavens to all down to the earth. You know, there's no one that surpasses me, and this is, will be my last rebirth. Mm. And um, so the story goes even further that as him being a prince, he never felt any joy and the pleasure of how other kids were. Mm. He was always contemplating whether why is this? Why is that? And the beauty about the, the prince, Prince Siddhartha Gautama, was that he was very intelligent. Mm. And that for every topic that he learned from any master or any topic that he learned from any teacher, that he would surpass the teacher. Mm. And then whatever he'd learned, he'd learn very, very quickly. And he started to question about you know, life and death. He started questioning about how is this, why is this? And he was very compassionate. Whenever you see anyone that's poor or that's not you know, living how he would, uh -huh. you know, he would be very compassionate and he would give their food away. But the thing is, when he was born, the, the king basically said, he called a, a sage. Uh -huh. The sage came over, he looked at the Buddha's body, and he found that the Buddha has uh, 32 marks of beauty and also um, uh, 80 marks of um, perfection. Uh -huh. And he said that this, this prince in the future, he will either become a universal monarch, basically a king of all kings, mm or he will become a Buddha, meaning that he will leave the palace and become Buddha. And so when the king hearing about this, he was very sad. And he, of course, doesn't want his son to leave the palace. Right. He wants his son to stay and become a universal monarch. And so from when he was growing up, the king made sure that no old people were around, no ugly people were around. He was always surrounded by beautiful people. He was always surrounded by young people. Mm. He had all the money in the world. He has all the things he ever wanted, everything that he wanted he could have. Huh. And um, over time, even though he had all the luxuries in the world, the, 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 the king even built four different palaces, one for the four. spring, one for the summer, one for the fall, one for the winter. So he had four different houses, basically, to stay in four different seasons. Wow. But even then, having all these material wealth and material pleasures, he never felt any happiness. He actually felt in prison in his own home. Hmm. And over time, <clears throat> he asked the king if he can visit the outside kingdom. He wants to visit the kingdom, see who, who, who is there in his kingdom. And so when he walked out on four different occasions, he, fall, he saw four different signs. Uh -huh. He saw um, a sick man, he saw an old man, he saw a dead man, and he saw a sage. 
of a Brahmic religion who is very peaceful and all that. Mm -hmm. And so when he saw those three other signs, the um, old man, the sick man, and the dead man, he was very confused. And he was always wondering, why is it that way? Why is this the way? And he was always contemplating from then on out, like, am I going to grow old? Am I going to become sick? Am yeah. I going to die one day? Is my wife going to die one day? Is my son going to get sick and die one day? Is my father going to get sick and die one day? And asking all those questions, his, his assistant, Chana, basically said, yes, we all are going to grow old. We're all going to get sick. We're all going to die. And so when he saw that sage of the Brahmic religion who was wearing a yellow robe and, and becoming very, very calm, he saw that as a symbol mm. and as a sign that he should leave the palace life in pursuit of the ascetic life. Mm. Shaved his head and he um, pursued the, this ascetic life for six years, learning under six, um, many different masters and finding out that none of the masters can teach the way to finding the truth mm. of finding... Uh, how to end old age, how to end sickness, how to end death. Mm. And over six years, he basically studied and practiced um, hardship, starving himself, only eating a sesame seed um, every single day until for six years. So at the end of the six years, he became skin and bone. And he couldn't pursue this practice anymore because he didn't have any more strength. And so that's when he considered practicing the middle way. So the middle way here, it's very important. It's, imagine a guitar. If you were to play guitar, but the string is too loose, then the sound will be very different. Whereas if you tighten up the string and your, your string becomes too high strung, it still doesn't work as well. Only when the string is at the perfect balance, when right. the sound is, is good. Yeah. So the Buddha said the practice of the Dharma should, act, should be the same way. If you shouldn't be too lazy and not do anything, but at the same time you shouldn't put in too much effort that you're straining your mental self. Mm -hmm. But it's always in that middle path where it's very, you're very relaxed when you're practicing the Dharma. Uh. And from that concept, he meditated under the Bodhi tree for 49 days observing his breath in and out, becoming aware of the sensations within the body, understanding the laws of cause and effect, understanding the laws of cause and condition, understanding the laws of impermanence, that things constantly change. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, he saw that there is no self. And after realizing that everything returns to emptiness, mm -hmm. that's when he became enlightened. Oh. He saw that everything goes to emptiness. Now, the term emptiness here is a very high... Um, it's like a high academic, very complicated term. You have to understand the fundamentals, the mm. basics for, for us to even go into the, the concept of emptiness. And so emptiness will be something that over maybe into the future down the line when everyone who is watching has a strong hold of the fundamentals. Here, the fundamentals here is the laws of cause and effect, the laws of cause and condition or causality, the laws of impermanence and the laws of no self. After we explain all those, mm. and then eventually we'll go into the, the term of emptiness. But, but that's how the, the Buddha understood the Dharma. I it's see. through his own observation of his mind and body that he was able to realize the truth, those four laws that we said. I see. And within his home body, he, basically he observed a sensation. A sensation can be an itchy sensation, a numbing sensation, a cold sensation, a hot sensation, any type of sensation in the body that you can feel. When you feel the sensation that arises, it arises only for a brief moment before it passes away. That anything arises will only pass away. So what does that say? That anything that arises goes away. Right. So that's the laws of impermanence. Oh. Things constantly change. And it changed within the microscopic portion of the, the laws of your body. I see. Down to the subatomic particles, your body is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said before, like we have my, my hand, and you see my hand has skin cells. Inside of my skin cells, you'll see that there are molecules. Inside molecules, you'll see that there are atoms. Within an atom, you'll see that there are electrons, protons, and neutrons. Mm -hmm. But when you observe the movements of the electrons, protons, and neutrons, mm -hmm. what do you see? That they're constantly in motion. Uh -huh. So even, the, even though we're standing still, our body is constantly moving. 
You know? And so that's what the Buddha wants us to understand when he teaches Buddhism or the Dharma for more than 45 years, that he's showing us that look within ourselves. We don't have to look anywhere far. Mm. But when you start to observe the breath and look within ourselves, you can see all the fundamental teachings of the Buddha and how we can use that teachings to improve the quality of our life. I see. Yes. So it takes us back into the whole journey of the Buddha. And, and now as we go on to a segue into our, um, my next question is, is after this break is about the present day. So what, how does Buddhism last up into this day? How are his teachings um, timeless in a sense? Okay. Like what can we learn through that? So as we come back into our uh, break, hopefully you can share us some insight into yes. Buddhism today. Okay, uh, we will continue after these commercial break. Say, 